Welcome to the Deep Dive. Ever wished you had a sidekick? You know, someone who could, like, whip up a presentation last minute or write code for you? Or even plan your meals. Yeah. Well, today, we're diving into the world of AI that's making those dreams a reality. ChatGPT. We're going way beyond the hype in this deep dive. Right, getting into what this tool actually does. Why it's causing such a stir online and in the media. And yeah, what it reveals about the future. All based on that really interesting YouTube video you sent over. You know those friends, the ones who always seem to be ahead of the curve on like every new thing? Oh yeah, for sure. That's how I felt watching this video. Like I was getting a glimpse into the future that everyone's suddenly talking about. Yeah, and the video host starts off strong, you know, with a pretty bullet statement. Okay, hit me. They said ChatGPT hit a million users faster than Netflix and Instagram. Wow. No, those are some seriously heavy hitters. Right. Like, it makes you wonder what's driving that kind of, I don't know, rocket-fueled popularity. Yeah, I don't think it's just about, like, being another tech tool. It's got to be deeper than that, right? Way deeper. Okay, so tell me more. The video positions ChatGPT as a different kind of beast. Okay, I like it. They're saying forget keywords. For, forget just Googling something. Yeah, forget basic search results. This is like next level. This is this is about talking to AI. What, like I'm talking to you? Yeah, exactly. Like you'd talk to a person. Oh, wow. You're not just finding information anymore. You're commanding it to create something totally new. So it's like having, I don't know, like a personal assistant who speaks fluent code. Mm. Writes really compelling marketing copy. Okay. And even knows your favorite recipe. They actually gave that example in the video. What? No way! Yeah, it's crazy, right? So ChatGPT, it's like the Swiss Army knife of digital tools. That's a great way to put it. Okay, so forget the lasagna for a second. Honestly, the coding aspect kind of blew my mind. Yeah, for sure. The video showed how ChatGPT can actually, like, debug code and then explain the fixes. Oh, it's pretty wild. Is this for real or is it just smoke and mirrors? Oh no, it's totally for real. Really? Yeah, and that's what has everyone in the tech world like buzzing about it. Makes sense. Imagine being a brand new coder. Just starting out. Yeah, totally stuck on this bug and then boom. Solution. You have this AI assistant not only fixing the error but actually like teaching you why it was wrong. That's, that's powerful stuff. Yeah, it's huge. And well, then... There's a butt coming. Well, yeah, the video did mention that Stack Overflow actually banned ChatGPT generated answers. Oh, wow. So they're just shutting it down. Yeah, they said it's to kind of maintain trust in, you know, human expertise. I see. So there's a concern about this technology becoming, I don't know, too good. Yeah, there's definitely a tension there. Okay, so break it down for me. So on the one hand, you've got this tool that could totally democratize coding knowledge. And make everyone way more efficient. Right, exactly. But there's another side. There's the very real fear of what happens to, you know, human expertise. Yeah, if an AI can do it faster and I guess seemingly better, what's the point of learning all that stuff yourself? Exactly. And it's not just for like, you know, the coding wizards of the world, right? Right. The video talked about how chat GPT can be used for more everyday things too. Totally. Like creating those meal plans we were talking about earlier. Yeah, definitely. That's what I thought was so interesting, you know? Yeah. It's not just about like, you know, AI world domination. Yeah. It's about it actually like trickling down into our daily routines and stuff. It's true. And they showed it in the video, someone actually asking for like a week's worth of meal plans. Oh, wow. And a shopping list, but, and here's the catch. Okay, there's a catch. Yeah, tailored to their dietary needs. Oh, wow. And boom, ChatGPT just like delivers it. That's that's kind of amazing, though. It is pretty cool. Imagine never having to like stress about dinner again. I know, right? Just tell ChatGPT, you know, what you feel like eating or what you can't eat. Exactly. And it just handles the rest. Yeah, I mean. Dream come true, honestly. Right. Especially for someone like me who like would rather just order takeout than like, you know. Yeah, Meal prep and all that. Meal prepping is the worst. The worst. I mean, it does kind of make you wonder, like, what can't it do? Right. Where does it end? Yeah, because the video hosts definitely seem to think that, like, the sky's the limit. Oh, yeah. They even compared ChatGPT's impact to that of Google. Can you believe that? Oh, no kid. That's a pretty bold statement. Yeah, because mm -hmm. Google's, like, Google, you know. Right. They basically redefined how we find information. Period. Totally. So are we really on the verge of, like, another seismic shift like that? I mean, that's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Right. The potential is huge. Yeah. But it's important to remember that ChatGPT, just like any technology, right. 
It's not a magic bullet. Okay, so no quick fixes. It's quite. Okay, so then what are the limitations we need to keep in mind? Well, one really important thing to remember is that, you know, the chat GPT is only as good as the information it's been trained on. Oh, true. It's like, you know that old saying? Get me with it. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. So it's like, you can feed chat GPT all this data, but if that data is, you know, incomplete right. or like biased in some way it's gonna spit out something it's crazy it's gonna affect the output you know that's true yeah so it's not perfect it's like, like garbage in garbage out yeah, right? exactly. so so we need to be really mindful about the like the data diet we're feeding these ai models right 100 percent. because is there a risk i mean could this create like echo chambers yeah for sure or even perpetuate like existing biases that we're trying to get rid of oh absolutely it's like it's like um training a chef right. with just one cookbook okay they might become incredible at those specific recipes right but they're like their culinary repertoire is going to be very limited right very limited same goes for chat gpt okay so it's only as good as what we teach it exactly and so if it's mainly trained on code written by like a certain demographic you know okay yeah it might really struggle to understand or even generate code that like deviates from those norms. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Right. Yeah. So then how do we make sure that these AI systems are getting like a more balanced and like representative, I don't know, education, so to speak? That is the question, isn't it? Right. And honestly, it's a challenge. It requires like a yeah. multi-pronged <laughs> approach. You know what I mean? Okay. So developers, they need to be way more mindful of the data sets they're using to train these models. Makes sense. Right. And like actively seeking out, you know, more diverse, more diverse, more representative sources. Not... And then on the user end, yeah. we need to be like critical okay. of well, the information that we're getting from these tools, not taking everything at face value, you know? It's like anything else, right? Totally. Critical thinking is key. We can't just blindly trust like any single source of information. It's true. Whether it's, you know, coming from a person, a website, or even, you know. Even a super smart AI. A super smart AI, yeah. Exactly. It all comes back to that. Being critical. Yeah. And and thinking for ourselves. Precisely. And as ChatGPT and all these other similar tools, you know, yeah. become more integrated into our lives, right. that ability to, like, think critically and independently is yeah. going to be even more important than it is now. For sure. So we've gone from chat GPT writing code to like planning our meals and grocery lists. It's a lot. It really okay. is. And we've talked about like, you know, this incredible potential. Right. But also the need to be, you know. Critical. Critical. Yeah. And what it's telling us. It feels like we're on the edge of something really huge. Yeah. But is it like, you know, is this a revolution? Right. Or just the next logical step in, you know, the evolution of all this? Yeah. It's a great question. And the, you know, the video hosts definitely seem to think that, you know, it's a revolution. Yeah, they were really going for it. Oh, yeah. They even said, remember they said. They compared it to Google. Yeah, to Google. Yeah. Which I was like, whoa. That's that's a high bar. It's a high bar. And I'm not sure I'd go that far. Yeah. At least not yet, you know. Yeah. Google's a tough one to beat. They've just. They're so ingrained. They're synonymous with finding information online. Yeah, exactly. So what would it even take for ChatGPT to, like, reach that level? You know, that's a good question for ChatGPT to really, like, I don't know, revolutionize things. Yeah, I think it needs to go beyond being a really remarkable tool. You know, like Rock it back. has to fundamentally change. Yeah, how we interact with information. Okay, how we work, even how we think. Oh wow! You know, imagine a world where instead of just like searching for answers, yeah, we're having these conversations with AI to like solve problems, generate ideas. Maybe even challenge our own assumptions. Okay. Yeah. That'd be a game changer. Right. But it's not just about, you know, like the technology advancing, right? Right. There's there's a whole social and ethical side to this too. A hundred percent. That yeah. we have to consider. Yeah, absolutely. As AI becomes, you know, even more a part of our everyday lives, right. we really have to start asking ourselves some, you know, some tough questions. Like what? Give me an example. Well, like, how do we make sure that these tools are being used ethically? Right. Responsibly. Responsibly, exactly. And how do we prevent bias? Yeah, that's a big from one. From creeping in. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, these are important conversations. Absolutely. That we need to be having. Right. Like now, not, yeah. you know, down the line when it might be too late. Exactly. Exactly. So where do we go from here? Right. What's the one thing 
you hope like our listeners take away from you know from this whole deep dive on chat gpt that's a good question i think the biggest takeaway is that you know the future of ai yeah it's not just something that's happening to us okay it's something mm. that we're all like actively shaping by yeah. the choices that we make today i like that so you know whether you're like you know a uh, a total tech enthusiast or you're just you know starting to wrap your head around ai and all this stuff right just remember that like your voice matters your perspective matters yeah stay curious okay stay informed but most importantly like stay engaged love it stay engaged well said in the conversation a huge thank you to you to you and to all of our listeners for joining us on this deep dive into the world of chat gpt it's a wild world it is a wild world it really is yeah. it's a world full of possibilities but it's up to us to you know to make the right choices to make the right choices exactly to navigate all this thoughtfully and responsibly couldn't have said it better myself until next time keep exploring keep questioning keep diving deep